If domain expansion is considered to be the pinnacle of Jujutsu sorcery, then a barrierless domain can be considered a truly divine technique, reserved for only those few that have transcended the world of Jujutsu. First, I'll quickly go over the basics of a domain expansion. A lethal domain expansion is essentially created by the user expanding their innate domain while using a barrier to construct a separate space with the user's innate curse technique imbued inside it, allowing for short hit attacks. The barrier is also completely closed from the inside to keep the opponent in with the caveat of being easily able to be broken from the outside. A barrierless domain doesn't have that drawback as it allows the user to manifest their own innate domain into reality without having to use a barrier. It is said to be like an artist painting on empty air without a canvas or filling water without a water bottle. With that, the user can still have its short hit effect without closing its barrier. The effective range of the short hit effect can also be considered as the exterior of the domain and be extended with the binding vow by allowing an escape route. Without a barrier, it does not have to worry about falling apart if the barrier is broken from the outside, at least in traditional cases. I say that because there has been a special case where a barrierless domain has been dismantled. From here on out, I'll be talking about spoilers from the JJK manga, so this is your warning. Now, in the fight against Yuki, Kenny actually used a barrierless domain. However, they were fighting in a Sunyata barrier created by Tengen, which is directly above the Tomb of the Star. Anyone skilled with barrier techniques can manipulate it to some extent. Even Kenny can manipulate it. But the key thing here is that the barrier is ultimately owned by Tengen. This allowed him to analyze all the information inside it, including Kenny's domain. Tengen planned to neutralize Kenny's domain barrier through the Sunyata barrier, but that was a huge miscalculation since the barrier that needed to be dismantled doesn't exist. However, by treating the short hit effects range as the exterior, Tengen was able to dismantle the barrierless domain along with the Sunyata barrier. While that is a case of a barrierless domain being neutralized, it's also a very special case that required Kenny to have been in a Sunyata barrier owned by Tengen, who is said to be the most skilled barrier user. However, you might be thinking, what about a domain clash? What if Yuki actually activated her domain expansion at the same time? Now, we might actually have an answer to that. In chapter 225, Gojo and Sakuna both pull out their domain expansions at the same time. However, as we learned during the Shibuya incident, Malevolent Shrine is also a barrierless domain. On the other end, Gojo's Infinite Void is a closed barrier domain. Essentially, this is a battle between a closed and open domain. While there is a domain clash taking place inside Gojo's barrier, they are only evenly matched inside that barrier. Outside the barrier is a different case. The effective range of Malevolent Shrine can go up to 200 meters with the Bind and Vow. Without a barrier, the effective range of Sukuna's domain easily extends past Gojo's barrier, even without the Bind and Vow. While Malevolent Shrine is up, it will continue to attack everything within the effective range of its guaranteed hit, with cleave and dismantle. This includes Gojo's barrier, which is being relentlessly attacked by Malevolent Shrine's guaranteed hit. And as I stated earlier, a barrier for domain expansion is weak against attacks from the outside. We see this clearly as Gojo's barrier is shattered before his neck is immediately sliced by Sukuna's guaranteed hit. As we see, a barrierless domain does not directly clash with a closed domain. Even if both users are even within a barrier, the one with the barrierless domain can still attack from the outside. And that's why, if Yuki had gotten up her own domain expansion, even if they were evenly matched inside the barrier, Kenny would have still been able to destroy your barrier from the outside. I doubt they would have been evenly matched though as even Yuki's simple domain was easily decimated by Kenny's domain. In hindsight, Gege was probably saving the outcome of these two types of domains for Gojo vs Sukuna, which is probably why we didn't see Yuki use her domain. 
It's unfortunate, but it's still one I've saved her, in my opinion. Burialist domains really are a cheat code though. Even Gojo, the supposed strongest, struggled against it. The only true ways to survive a burialist domain are to get far enough away since there is no barrier preventing escape or be Gojo. Basically, be able to spam RCT for a long time, which Gojo does to survive the relentless slashes. Or, you know, just not waste your domain expansion. So far, Kenny and Sukuna are the only ones shown to use barrierless domains. But maybe Gojo could be next. Yeah, I know it's Copium. But yeah, I know this is different content than I normally do, but I haven't seen anyone really cover this specific topic in detail about barrierless domains. And I love JJK, so... I made this quickly. Thank you if you did watch this, and if you liked the video, please drop a like and comment down below if you want. Subscribe too if you haven't already, and peace.